the GRC interview questions that get you hired, even with zero experience. When was the last time you landed a cybersecurity job interview? Last week? Last month? Or was it last year? The reality right now is that only 20% of cybersecurity job applications are getting a call back. 20%. On average, it takes 47 applications to land just one interview in cybersecurity. And for GRC roles, the numbers are even worse these days. Simply because everyone thinks it's the easy entry point into cybersecurity. But trust me, it's not as simple as just applying and getting hired. So, how do you stand out from the crowd? How do you land our first GRC analyst job or even your next one? So in today's video, I'm going to break down the most common GRC analyst interview question, the answers you need to succeed and tips that will help you walk into your interview with confidence. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Tol Okwe Michael, a cybersecurity expert and a career coach. I drop videos like this every week so you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on other great videos like this one. Now let's get into what I have for you today. So, I've been hiring GRC professionals for close to a decade now. I've sat through hundreds of these interviews. And you know what I've learned? The people who get hired are not necessarily the smartest ones in the room. Ooh, they are not always the ones with the most certifications or the fanciest degrees either. No, they are the ones who understand what companies actually want from a GRC analyst. And that's completely different from what most people think. Most candidates walk in thinking they need to prove they are compliance experts. They memorize regulations, frameworks, and every acronym they can find. Then they get asked one simple question and everything falls apart. Now, I want to show you a perfect example of a question like that. The business wants to launch a product next month, but your risk assessment shows it could violate industry regulations. However, this product could generate $50 million in revenue. Now, what do you do? You see, I've watched brilliant people with master's degree freeze up on this question because they suddenly realize this isn't about knowing regulations, it's about knowing something much harder. It is about business judgment. See, companies don't hire GRC analysts to say no to everything. They hire them to help the business say yes safely. That requires a complete Completely different mindset and once you understand this difference everything about how you approach these interviews changes now let me give you another example when I ask candidates how they would handle pushback from the sales team on a new security policy most people immediately they start explaining why the policy is necessary for compliance but what I actually want to hear is this I'll sit down with the sales team to understand what they're trying to accomplish then I'll figure out how to achieve the same business outcome while managing the risk appropriately. Brilliant! See, that's the mindset that gets you hired. You see yourself as a business partner who helps solve problems, not a policy enforcer who creates obstacles. Before we dive into the specific questions you'll face, let me share something that might surprise you. The hardest GRC interview questions are not technical at all. They are situational. They put you in scenarios where there is no perfect answer. Where you have to balance competing priorities, where you have to make tough calls with incomplete information. Now, why do they do this? Because that is what GRC work actually looks like. Day to day, you're not sitting in a corner checking boxes all day. You are in meetings with frustrated business leaders who think compliance is slowing them down. You're dealing with audit findings that could impact major deals. You're trying to explain complex risks to executives who just want to know if they can move forward with their plans or not. See, that's the reality of GRC work. And the interview questions are designed to see if you can handle that reality. So let's start with the questions that trip up most candidates. And I will show you not just what to say, but how to think about these scenarios. Let's start with a crisis management question. You are almost guaranteed to get this one during an interview. You discover that your company has been non-compliant with a major regulation for the past six months. There's an audit schedule for next week. Walk me through how you will handle this. You see, it's normal for most people to panic here. They start thinking about all the technical aspects of audit preparation they don't know. They worry about specific regulatory requirements they haven't memorized. Let me tell you what the interviewer really wants to know. Are you ready? Can you think clearly on the pressure? Can you prioritize when everything seems urgent? Can you communicate bad news effectively? Let's look at exactly how you should approach it. This is what you say. First, I need to understand the scope of the problem. What specific regulation are we non-compliant with? 
how many processes or systems are affected and what is the potential penalty exposure we're looking at. Do you notice what we're doing here? You're not jumping straight into solutions. You are asking the right questions to understand the situation fully. Then you continue. Once I understand the scope, my media priorities will be damage control and transparency. Can we stop the non-compliant activity right now? Can we implement temporary controls while we develop a permanent fix? And how do we prepare to discuss this proactively with the auditor? So basically, what you're doing is you're showing that you understand audit management is not just about hiding problems. It's about demonstrating that you can identify issues and fix them responsibly. You know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall. I get it. That is why I created something more than just these videos you're watching. Something structured, practical, and focused on real action. It's called the five day cybersecurity job challenge. This isn't just content you binge and forget. We're talking hands on learning, real skills, and daily guidance. Two hours a day for five days. It's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen. Look, I love making these YouTube videos, but let's be honest. How many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that, and then didn't? That is why this challenge is different. It's designed to be your support, okay? We're not just learning, you're giving tasks, actionable steps every single day with live Q and A's where I personally help you avoid mistakes and learn the jobs that will change your life. Watching my videos is great, but if you want to go beyond watching, if you're ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below. You can't miss it. Now, enjoy the rest of this video, but don't forget to come back when you're ready to take that next step. The next one we will look at is the business pressure question. The question we have here is this. Your manager asks you to change a risk rating from high to medium in your report because a high rating might kill a major deal the company needs to close this quarter. What do you do? You see, this is where a lot of people either show they have no backbone or no business sense. The approach that works shows both integrity and business judgment. And this is what you're going to say. I want to understand what is driving this request. Is my manager concerned that my risk assessment might be incorrect or are they feeling pressure to support the deal? Then you can say, I would explain that I can't compromise the accuracy of our risk reporting, but I'm absolutely committed to finding solutions. Maybe there are additional controls we could implement that would genuinely reduce the risk. Maybe we could structure the deal differently to manage the exposure, or maybe we could phase the implementation to reduce upfront risk. What you're demonstrating here is that you have principles, but you are also a problem solver who wants the business to succeed. Then after that comes the stakeholder management question. This is the one that reveals whether you understand the political side of GRC work or not. For example, you can be asked, the IT department says your new security requirements are impossible to implement within budget. The business says they can't operate with the restrictions you're proposing. Now, how do you move forward? This is where your people skills matter more than your technical knowledge. The effective response starts with, I'll begin by understanding each group's constraints and objectives. What specific technical challenges is IT facing? What business processes would be impacted by the restrictions? Here, what you're doing is you're showing that you listen first before pushing agenda. Then you can continue with this. I'll look for creative solutions. Maybe there are alternative controls that achieve the same risk reduction with less operational impact. Maybe we can phase the implementation to spread the cost over time, or maybe there are process changes that reduce the need for technical controls. You see that? What you should always remember is good GRC isn't about imposing the most restrictive controls possible. It's about finding the right balance between risk and business needs. And that brings us to the knowledge gap question now. Here is where a lot of entry-level candidates get tripped up. They would ask you something like, how would you implement a vendor risk management program for our organization? And you're thinking, I've never implemented a vendor risk program in my life. But do you know the secret behind this question? 
They don't expect you to have done this before. They want to see how you would approach a complex project you've never tackled. That is what this is about. So you could answer with, I will start by understanding our current vendor relationships and where we have the most risk exposure, which vendors have access to our critical systems, which ones handle our sensitive data, and what would happen if our top vendors suddenly became unavailable. You see, by answering the question this way, you're showing systematic thinking and risk-based prioritization. You can then continue with something like, once I've done this, then I would research industry best practices and regulatory requirements that apply to our sector. And I will also talk to other departments to understand their vendor relationships and any concerns they have. You can see that nowhere in that answer did I say, I don't have experience with this. You see? So instead of showing that gap in knowledge, demonstrate that you know how to learn and gather input from stakeholders. You can then wrap up with this. I'll design a program that is proportional to our actual risk, more oversight for high risk vendors, streamlined processes for low risk ones, and the goal is meaningful risk reduction and not just vendor paperwork. And that is it. You see? Answering this way shows you understand that good GRC adds value, not just bureaucracy. Now, let me tell you something that might surprise you. The technical questions are usually the easiest part of the interview. Hmm, you may not believe that, but let me explain. What really determines whether you get hired is something completely different. It's whether the interviewer thinks you can work effectively with other people, other people, other people. Think about it, as a GRC analyst, you're going to be the person telling other departments they need to change how they work. You're going to be delivering bad news about all these findings. You're going to be asking busy people to spend time on compliance activities that they probably don't want to do, right? If you can't handle them diplomatically, you will fail in this role, no matter how much you know about regulations. So when they ask you about dealing with difficult stakeholders, don't give me some textbook answer about clear communication and documentation. No, that's not it. Think about how you would actually handle a situation where the sales director is frustrated because your compliance requirements are affecting their revenue targets. If you're faced with a question along this line, I'm going to answer it this way. I would ask to meet with them one-on-one -on -one to understand their specific challenges, what deals have been impacted, which requirements feel most burdensome, and then I'll work with them to find solutions. Maybe we can streamline certain processes. Maybe we can adjust timelines. Maybe we can even provide better training so their team understand the requirements. Now, you're showing that you see yourself as a business partner, not a compliance corp. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the questions you should ask them. Yes, because this is where you can really set yourself apart. Okay, they have interviewed other people, they answered the question the same way you did, but you now need to set yourself apart. Don't ask generic questions like, what's the company culture like? Or what does a typical day look like? No, don't ask that. Ask questions that show strategic thinking, like what are the biggest risk management challenges facing the organization right now? How does leadership view the role of GRC in supporting business objectives? Or how would success look like for this role in terms of business impact? Some people will say, how would success look like in 90 days? Don't do that anymore. These questions tell me you're thinking beyond just getting a job. You're thinking about how you can contribute value. You shouldn't forget that GRC is changing rapidly. Organizations are realizing that good risk management is not a cost center. It's a competitive advantage. They need people who can help them move fast while managing uncertainty effectively. You don't need to know every regulation. You need to show that you can think strategically, communicate effectively, and then help the business achieve its objectives safely. That's what gets you hired. That's what builds a successful career in GRC. If this helps you think differently about GRC interviews, hit that subscribe button. I share insights like this every week that come from real hiring experience, not just theory. And when you land that role using this approach, because you will come back and drop a comment to encourage someone to focus on what really matters. Okay. Now go show them you are the strategic thinker they've been looking for. Okay. I hope I'm leaving you today better than I met you. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. You know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall. I get it. That is why I created something more than just these videos you're watching. Something structured, practical, and focused on real action. It's called the five day cybersecurity job challenge. This isn't just content you'll binge and forget. 
we're talking hands-on learning, real skills, and daily guidance. Two hours a day for five days. It's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen. Look, I love making these YouTube videos, but let's be honest. How many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that, and then didn't? That is why this challenge is different. It's designed to be your support, okay? We're not just learning, you're giving tasks, actionable steps every single day with live Q and A's where I personally help you avoid mistakes and learn the jobs that will change your life. Watching my videos is great, but if you want to go beyond watching, if you're ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below. You can't miss it.